Hello, my name is David Brian Younger, and my capstone project is a demo video game written in HTML. I'm operating a handyman-like side business called Outlawed Bro, and I've been hired to make an expanded version of the Telltale's Walking Dead Season 1. The original 2012 video game that was marketed as giving players the freedom to choose their own destiny, but in reality, it had a pretty linear storyline. Here you can see I've chosen to alleviate that problem by expanding the existing storyline and including a uh, prison subplot and including scenes where you can end up killing uh, my version of Lee so that you can end up playing as uh, my version of Clementine to, uh, to see what would happen in the original game without her her protector and mentor there. In the original game, you play as Lee Everett, who was recently convicted of killing his wife and a senator when he caught them having an affair. Lee is on his way to prison when his transport car is driven off the road, and the officer watching Lee is killed. Lee then goes to the nearest house to escape a horde of zombies, where he runs into a little girl who ends up being the main protagonist in the series after Lee dies at the end of the first game. The bad thing about the game is that the choices you make don't really have many long-lasting consequences. When you save the life of a character in the original game, they usually don't contribute much before their life is snuffed out, or they just end up running away in the next episode or so. The lack of consequences is especially noticeable in the third and fourth entries in the video game, where literally everything you've done in the previous game basically dwindles down to a cut scene or a nigh on impossible to spot detail scar or tattoo added to your version of Clementine. Building a video game of this scope can often take a team of 25 or more longer than a year to make, so the demo I've made still has quite a bit way to go before I'd seriously consider it to be complete, but should give my client a good example of what it could be. I decided to use HTML to create this storyboard-like video game. In order to create this video game, I first drew a slide using Sketchbook Pro 2011, which I would map to an HTML file that also allows me to provide clickable areas in the game uh, background and uh, links in the bottom for players to click on in order to progress the game. When the page gets brought up, a sound file plays that tells people what's going on in the story. The main antagonist in the original video game was uh, a horde of zombies that had taken over the world. I wanted to improve on their attributes and make them a little bit more threatening than they were in the original game. There are actually several different types of zombies. The type of zombie you're dealing with depends on a few factors, but mostly what created the zombie and how the zombie moves. Zombies can be created in numerous different ways, either using, usually either using magic or a viral infection, and they can be described as moving either fast or slow. The zombies in The Walking Dead have been branded Kirkman zombies, in that they are very similar to old school Romero zombies, the only difference being that everyone on Earth is already infected with a virus which lays dormant until they are killed. Being bitten by a zombie in uh, Kirkman's universe will for some reason kill you through just rabid infection, but eating infected flesh or getting zombie blood in a wound or in your mouth will for some reason, the plot, not trigger that transformation. This means that Kirkman zombies have a little bit more staying power than Romero zombies in, in that even if you kill the very last living Kirkman zombie, they could always flare back up again when somebody dies. Despite this tweak, Kirkman zombies still have the same issue that Romero zombies do, in that it would seem as though they would have a very difficult time becoming a global threat instead of a temporary nuisance. The infected are limited to human beings, unlike Resident Evil or Deadite zombies, which can literally almost infect anything. They can only be killed by damaging the brain, but that's actually not as difficult as a target as it would seem, especially if you wait until the zombies are within about 50 meters to take that shot. Our military takes down fully mobile people who can fire AK-47s, drive tanks, and shoot rockets at them uh, all the time, so it seems rather unlikely that they'd be taken down by melee-only fighters who slowly walk after them. Also, it seems weird that people wouldn't just uh, take some sort of precaution to assume that they don't come back as- die in their sleep and come back as zombies and kill everyone in the house. For this game, I wanted infected that could pose more of a realistic threat than Kirkman or Romero zombies. Prior to George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, zombies were often considered creations of voodoo magic. However, there are ancient tales of similar creatures in Greek lore called Vrykolakos, 
that are essentially werewolves that can become vampires if not properly disposed of. Vampires haven't always been considered the same thing as they are today. Before Bram Stoker's Dracula and other books canonized what constituted a vampire and what did not, Vampires were simply considered corpses that could become reanimated to devour family members who failed to perform established burial rituals. Without the well-established fangs and traditional weaknesses, an ancient European could categorize what we normally consider today to be a zombie as a vampire. Some ancient myths around vampires even describe the creatures turning into wolves or other monsters, or werewolves turning into vampires if some if those same burial rituals are ignored a second time, essentially meaning vampires, werewolves, and zombies could be considered the same creatures. These three fictional creatures have numerous matching attributes, so it's possible that if they existed in the real world, that they could all be receiving their powers from the same source. And when designing my version of the zombies, I wanted to take that into account. One of the more realistic iterations of zombies came from the video game The Last of Us, with what I'm going to refer to as Lou's. Lou's are infected with a mutated variation of the Orphlocordyceps fungus, which typically infects ants in South America. People initially infected with the mutated fungus act like the runner-type zombie in that they lose the ability to operate complex mechanisms and resort to bludgeon and eat people. As the fungus progresses, it encompasses the zombie's face, forcing the creature to communicate with a series of clicks, which gives it the nickname Clickers in the game. Eventually, the infection becomes so bad that it covers the host with hard mushroom plates that drastically increase the amount of damage the creatures can take. This fresh take on the zombie virus inspired me to look into more realistic versions of the zombie infection. I found them in a November 2014 edition of National Geographic. This edition of National Geographic contains several examples of real-world parasites that seem to mind control their hosts. The infections were mostly comprised of worms that live in digestive tracts that control their hosts in order to continue their life cycle, and insects that would impregnate other insects, forcing them to defend their young while they incubate. I decided to mix these two types of real-world infections to create the antagonists in the story. Thank you. 